place. Now it begins three years back on one of our midnight tours. The tours guys begin at 10.45 and at midnight you're down here in the cellar and we just shut the lights off while you wouldn't give you any warning. The story though begins at 11.55. A boy named Ryan is sitting right here. His brother is sitting next to him. At 11.55, Ryan describes it as though somebody pushes his shoulders to the wall and he can't move. Nobody sees a thing. Ryan doesn't even know what's going on. Until, as he describes it, Ryan said somebody grabbed his shirt and literally yanked him forward and he falls on the bench. When this happens, our guest speaker who was right up front rushes back here to check on Ryan. I was on the staircase. We both get back here and check on him. He looks right at me and says, Eric, I'm okay. But guys, have you ever seen when something like that happens to a person, they'll tell you they're okay, but their face tells a completely different story? Mm -hmm. Ryan knew something was wrong. He was literally white as a sheet. But he sat back down next to his brother. At midnight, the lights go off. In that five minutes that we spend in the dark, it happens again. For a second time, Ryan describes it as though someone pinned into the wall and he couldn't move. If that isn't enough, he guessed maybe a minute had gone by when he describes it as though a pair of hands grabbed his elbows and lifted him, he said, up off of the bench. He sits back down. Five minutes go by and the lights come back on. Brian stood straight up and he said, Eric, I don't like it here. I don't want to sit here anymore. What does he do? Well, Ryan moves. He leaves his little brother here. But Ryan walks to that wall, stands with his back to it so nobody gets behind it. Let me set the scene for you guys. Okay, Ryan's back here with his back to the wall, facing out. Our guests are here, our speaker's up front, and I'm on the staircase. Three or four minutes have gone by when we hear this sound. Ryan had literally been pushed into that staircase. Our guest speaker and I turned to see him getting up off of the concrete. He was pushed into that staircase, and there's nobody at that time within 10 feet of him. Before I realized what was going on, guys, he had moved past me. He was going up every one of those stairs out of this building. He runs up the stairs, down the old hallway, out the front door. He ran all the way back around behind the building into the courtyard. That's three years ago. He has not been back since. Okay? We've offered many times. His friends and family have been here. Even some of the ghost hunting shows that are on TV, that when they came here to film, they heard about Ryan. And they wanted him to come and sit here and tell them what happened. He flat out refused. He said, I don't care who's here, I'm not coming back. But guys, Ryan is local. He lives in this area. I've run into him a few times throughout town, and he always asks me this question. He says, Eric, how's the orphanage? My response is always the same. Come back in and see for yourself. But he won't do it. Even to this day, guys, it's been three years. As you guys are walking down here, you see... It's not very tall down here, right? I'm just about six feet tall, guys. Ryan stood above me a good six inches, okay? And outweighed me by at least 50 pounds. So he was a big guy. But to be pinned to that wall twice, to be picked up off of the bench, he got pushed into the staircase. Somebody didn't want him here. Do we know who it was? The children? Not likely. Rosa? Mm, maybe. Chances are it was Dr. Burns. He was the superintendent of the orphanage here, and he hated these kids as much as Rosa did. It could have also been the soldiers. Remember, guys, this building stood here and witnessed the Civil War. So it would have been used as a uh, headquarters, a field hospital. Could it have been one of those soldiers? Yeah, it could have been. All right? But that is the story of that scene. I promised I would share with you guys, and I did. Okay? Guys, we've seen the outhouse upstairs, right? Take a look for me right here on the wall. Do you see the, uh, the metal that's hanging out of the wall there? Yeah. yeah. Excuse me a second. It's right here. Guys, those are remnants of the original shackles. If you can imagine, those boys would have had their hands shackled to the wall. And that's how they were anchored. Imagine standing down here for hours at a time, in the dark. You're on a dirt floor. In the summertime, it's not so bad down here. But in the wintertime, guys, I've been here in the dead of winter. It is freezing cold down here. But imagine those orphans. They wouldn't have had the heavy clothing we have now, okay? Imagine what it must have been like. They probably didn't eat very well. They were probably sick. Imagine how hard that would have been for them. If that isn't bad enough, 
There is also evidence to suggest that as they stood here shackled to the wall, they were made to stand in a barrel of water. If you take a look, guys, to your right, by the toy table there, you see that barrel? That is not the original barrel. It's a replica, the same kind that would have been here. Imagine standing in that barrel as a six-year-old boy. It's full of water. It's going to be about your chest level. And you're shackled to the wall. What's going to happen? What do you guys think? Go ahead. Maybe in the winter time it will freeze, and if you're still in the winter time, they say you'll free, you'll try and get out, and you'll stuck there. Think about it, guys. Hypothermia is a real possibility, right? Yeah. Okay. But imagine this. Even today, what happens when you stand or sit in one place for a long time? Your legs get tired, right? Imagine these boys standing in that barrel of water for hours on end. Their legs are going to give out, and they're going to fall beneath that water. If they can't stand up on their own, they didn't come back up. Okay? It was punishment for some, and death for some as well. Right? Guys, our final story of the evening tonight deals with uh, what finally happened to Rosa Carmichael. But before we do that, one more thing I want to share with you guys. It's going to begin right here on the second row of benches. Something we've had happen quite a few times. We talked about the Ghost Adventures crew being here, right? Back in the pit is where Zach captured those EVPs that we talked about. On the second row of benches here, another very cool instance happened. If you've seen the show Ghost Lab, if anybody remembers it, it's two brothers, Brad and Barry Clayton. Barry was sitting here on the second row filming the basement. His brother Brad was up there by the door. And Brad literally called Rosa on the carpet. He said, get it out of here. Answer for what you did. And he kept going like that. What finally happens? From down that hallway, a stone is thrown at Brad. Past him, up here by Barry. And you guys can see it on camera. Barry goes like this because somebody threw a stone at him. From down the hallway. All right? Another instance, we had a young lady sitting here one evening. She too complained that someone had thrown a stone at her. But here's how it happened. She was sitting here with her mom. There were two women back here. The lights had gone out. And as they sat in the dark, this little girl's first words were very simple. She said, somebody threw a rock at me. She could hear it, she said, whiz by her ear. And it hits the column up front. And she can hear the ting that it makes on the metal. Guys, you see sitting here right now, right? You could probably take something and throw it past people, okay? And get away with it. But in the dark, how many times out of ten are you going to do that and not hit anybody? Not very many, okay? If you take a look around at the floor, there's debris on it, right? When the lights came back on, we looked at that little girl's feet. She was sitting at that second row of benches. There was a pebble right in front of her feet about the size of a pea that had been thrown through the dark, past her, and it hit that post in front. Interesting. So things do happen here in the cellar of the orphanage, guys. Right? All right, we're going to begin our final story.